Welcome back. We have one more important topic to discuss today, and that is wearable technologies. To help us introduce us to the topic and become very knowledgeable, we are thrilled to welcome Pankaj Keria. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. I run the wearable business at Qualcomm, and I'm delighted to be with you. So today, over the next 30 minutes, we'll talk about the wearable space, the wearables revolution, how it is making us fitter, live better, enjoy day-to-day -day lives. I will cover what's happening in the market, what's our vision at Qualcomm, how each one of you can participate in the wearables revolution. I will close with health wearables. Maybe health wearables is the next frontier. And we leave time for a few questions. So I know most of you are from San Diego, um, and you know Qualcomm. What you may not know is in addition to smartphones, in your backyard, we have a thriving IoT business, and of course, a growing wearables business. So I am very proud. I hope you are as proud as I am. So let's talk about the market, the wearables market. You know, over the last five or six years, it has gone up and to the right. And we don't see an end to that. If I just look at what has happened this year, in March, IDC said we grew 28%. 28% despite COVID or maybe because of COVID, COVID has made wearables more important, more prevalent. Apple talked about 100 million smartwatches, Apple watches. Apple has shipped about a billion iPhones. So 100 million watches, 1 billion iPhones. That's quite a milestone. Google shook hands with Samsung and decided to double down. In the process, they also bought Fitbit. So you know, when big companies like Apple and Samsung and Google are investing in the space, you have to listen. A couple months ago, Whoop, maybe most of you never heard of Whoop, they raised money at 3.6 billion valuation. That's more than what Google paid Fitbit. Best Buy. Best Buy bought Great Call three or four years ago from our backyard. Now they bought Current Health. Best Buy is building out health variables. I'll talk more about that. And last but not the least, you know, when Wall Street Journal and USA Today and Washington Post and San Diego News talk about wearables, this thing has gone mainstream. So wearables is hot. It's growing like this. Many, many people are investing. We at Qualcomm are investing. And we are doing it for you, for you, the consumer. So. What are wearables? Wearables are anything you wear on you. They bring fashion and technology together. You could think of wearables as targeting one of these use cases. It could be better ways to connect. It could be around fitness and health and medical. It could be around messaging 
with your loved ones. Wearables is not just the Apple Watch. It is not just the Samsung Watch. We have wearables for my four-year-old daughter or my parents and grandparents. We have wearables for my dogs and my cats. Wearables are not just smartwatches. They are smartwatches, they are earbuds, they are smart glasses, they are shoes. They connect in different ways. They have different software. They come in different price points. You can buy a wearable today for 19 or 29 dollars, or you could spend 5,000 dollars everything in between. So there's a lot of variety, lot of segmentation. This typically happens in a growing market. So this is not surprising. Where do we think wearables will be over the next few years? So this is how we at Qualcomm think about the vision around wearables. We think about head to toe any technology plus lifestyle product that you have on you is a wearable. You, you can see some examples. They keep us connected. If you are a patient, they keep you connected to your nurse and doctor. They are intuitive. They are natural. They get used to you. They act based on where you are. Some people, like me, uh, we wear multiple wearables. They are connected with each other. They talk to each other. You don't have to muck around with Bluetooth pairing and so on. It happens automatically. Wearables not only track what you have done, but they predict what you will do. They give you proactive guidance, advice. They are personal to you. They are on you. They come in different shapes and sizes. And wearables is not just for me, it's for everyone. It's for four-year-olds and the silver population. So when we think about wearables, this is what we think about. Let me give you a sense of the range of products our customers have launched just this year. We had some smartwatches from companies like Oppo and Mobvoi. We had fashion watches, you know, Fossil and Michael Kors bringing the best of fashion and technology. We had products from luxury companies like Louis Vuitton and Tag Heuer and Mont Blanc. We have lots of wearables for children. If you have a four to 10 year old, you don't give them a smartphone, but you still want to know where she is. If she is coming late from school, you want to know. There are wearables for your pets. If you count your steps, if you want to be healthy, why should your pet not be? There are wearables for expensive handbags some of you might have. Wearables like smart glass. But maybe given today's context, there are wearables for seniors and the silver population. Here are some examples of products shipping. I will talk about what they do but they come in different shapes and sizes. Some you wear around your, pendant, uh, around your neck, some on your wrist, some on your belt, some in your handbag. They keep you fit. They make you healthy. They connect you with people you care about. They are always with you. They call 
your concierge service um, to get things done, to remind you of medication, or remind you to take those 10,000 steps. Let's look at a few. Um, this is from Great Call, or the company previously known as Great Call, now part of Best Buy. Basically, this is something you wear around your neck on a lanyard. It is one touch. You are one touch away from calling your nurse or your doctor or your caretaker. It keeps you fit. It keeps you healthy. If, if you happen to fall, it will call 911 for you. It knows where you are. It knows who you are. It is your personal companion. This one comes from Verizon. So Verizon is focused in this space. They have a care platform. And they are bringing the, plat the services around the platform to you based on this smartwatch. Again, one touch emergency calling. If you want to talk to your children or grandchildren, you can do text to speech. You can do voice calling. It gives you reminders about your medication and so on. Of course, if we are going to wear something all day long, every day of the week, it needs to look good. So here's an example from Fossil. Fossil brings the best of technology, Qualcomm technology, the best of fitness or health, so heart rate, ECG, SpO2, sleep, making sure you're doing all of these things well. But it brings also fashion. So these are products you want to wear, not something you have to wear. And I threw, threw this one in there. Uh, if you're going to take care of yourself and you have a pet, don't forget your pet. So the wearable segment is growing like crazy. It is segmenting. There are lots of choices for all of us. What's the next big thing? Maybe the next big thing is how wearables and healthcare come together. These data points are mind-boggling. If we look at the amount of money we spend in the US on healthcare, it is significant portion of our GDP, right? We threw in some numbers just, just to overwhelm you with how much we are spending on health and medicine. Here's IDC's predi prediction. You know, we are in late 21, just in three years, four years. By 2025, wearable devices will be directly credited with saving more than 150,000 lives a year as more consumers adopt wearable technology and improve their health and fitness. That's quite a prediction. If wearable can save one life, it is worth pursuing. If it can save so many lives, you know, that's something I get excited about. Just a few years ago, um, we had the jitterbug 
coming from great call. Today, there are many different types of form factors and devices to keep us healthy, to keep us fit. Where, where are we going? Tomorrow you'll have more choices. If you don't like wearing something on your wrist, you can wear it here. If you don't like this, you can wear it here. If you don't like this, you can wear it around your neck. If you don't like this, you can wear it with your clothing. The experiences will get richer. This is not something you should be forced to wear. This is something you want to wear because the experience is so engaging. You know, yesterday, I went to the doctor. Over the last 18 months with COVID, we have gotten used to the doctor coming to me. I talked to my doctor and nurse over Zoom. This is where we are going. With a wearable on me, my doctor knows my vitals. She knows my heart rate, what it has been over the last 24 hours and over the last week and so on. She knows my ECG. She knows my temperature. She knows how active I am. She knows my blood pressure. Based on that, she can advise me what I am doing right, what I should change. This is the wave of the future. These wearable devices and services will get integrated with my hospital, with my insurance. So I just show up. I just be who I am. And my doctor and nurse are looking after me. It will literally become my health and wellness and medical companion. Just imagine what this world would look like over the next couple of years. Maybe I'll highlight some trends. Number one, it is a tool you have. It's always with you. It knows who you are. It's always sensing your vitals. It's always guiding you to do the right thing. If you have not moved enough, it is always telling you to move 2,000 steps more. It is your personal assistant. It knows who you are. It knows your vitals. It knows your history. It knows what you have done. It knows what you should do. It is your personal companion. It is your health companion. It connects you with your friends your family, your doctors, your insurance. It is integrated in your day-to-day -day life. Second trend, the smarter the wearable, the more valuable to you and I. So whether it is fitness or wellness or health and medical, there is significant innovation happening in these sensors that we have outlined. That this is, this will become second nature. This will be your sixth sense. Last but not the least, It's not just a device. It's how it is integrated in your life. So in-home care will become increasingly prevalent. And inside your home, there will be enough sensors, enough wearables. The phone, the, the home will become 
your smart home. It will become where you live the most precious years of your life. It will be preventative, but it will also be your companion. So, um, um, you know, Qualcomm, very good company in our neighborhood. I'm proud to be working at Qualcomm. We work on technology that changes people's lives. We are working with many, many companies, including many companies in San Diego, to, to bring the right solution, the right service, to all of you. Yes, you hear a lot about wearables for adults, but really there's a lot of innovation happening. Wearables for children, wearables for the silver generation, wearables for pets. You know what keeps me excited? Today, there are maybe 300 million people with some kind of wearable. And we have 7 billion population. Maybe by the end of the decade, every one of us will have at least one wearable. And we'll be able to enjoy the benefits that I talked about. So let me pause here and take some questions from Simona. Thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed how you took us to the breadth and the variety of what's here today and also talked a little bit about the future. I'm, I'm really excited about this Q&A time with the audience. Um, so let's turn to some future question, which, and so we have this question here that says, do you see wearables turning into implants at some point in the future? Yes, why not? Um, you know, my journey, um, I, I worked on laptops, then tablets, then smartphones, then wearables. Implants is the next thing. Um, the technology is not there to make implants ubiquitous, but it will be. And if this decade is the decade of wearables, maybe the next decade will be the decade of implantables. All right, exciting, um, scary, exciting, all of the emotions I'm experiencing at least. Um, I want to ask you a personal question. Uh, clearly, you know a lot about this technology and where it's going. You, you've jokingly maybe mentioned the pets, the cats, the dogs, your, your family. Does every family member have a wearable in your household? And would you share what those are? Yeah, yeah, Simona, of course. Um, um, I have a small family. Today, I'm wearing five wearables. I have a smartwatch. I have a smart tracker here. It's beautiful. It's, it disappears on me. My shoe is available. You know, we have gotten used to counting steps using our smartwatch or smart tracker. But doesn't it make more sense to count steps using your shoe? I have a wearable here that reminds me to stand straight. And I have a wearable here to keep, keep things smart. My wife has a couple of wearables. My pet has a wearable. Um, you know, in the US, sometimes we care more about pets than our kids. It's unfortunate, but it, it happens. Um, there are 80 million pets, dogs and cats in the US households. On average, 
people spend $1,200 on their pet. So having a $49 or $99 pet tracker that lets you know where your dog is, is he or she healthy? Um, any signs that, that you don't expect is worth its weight in gold. So yes, my family has, is full of wearables. Fascinating. I love that we started with you. I'm going to have to look at your shoes a little bit more closely once we're done with the session. Thank you for sharing that. Um, we have lots of questions about um, security. So I'll read one from Jane. She says, all wearables are using Bluetooth technology and it is easily hacked. How secure is the information that they're tracking? Yeah. Uh, Jane, that's a good question. Um, we at Qualcomm take security seriously. The industry takes security seriously. Security and if I bring privacy, uh, part of it is perception and part of it is reality. The wearables are Bluetooth based, Wi-Fi based, 4G based and so on we'll go to 5G. The security is as good as you would find in your smartphone, for example, or in your tablet. Um, we continue to improve it. We don't think it's a hurdle, but, but we aspire to make it better every day. Security is important, not just for wearables, but all technology products. And uh, Qualcomm as the voice of the technology industry. Of course, we do everything we can uh, to, to make it right. Thank you so much. Um, next question is from Jan and Jan is asking how prevalent is fall detection technology in today's wearables yeah yeah Jan good question um, it is better than where it was a year ago two years ago three years ago it's not where we need it to be we want it to be so fall detection is available in a handful of wearables we are working with many people in the industry to make it ubiquitous, uh, to have it in every wearable. Excellent. So we have one more question, or time for one more question, that is. Um, and it, again, circles back to the security. Um, you've mentioned that Qualcomm is very serious about security, but for people who are trying to figure out health clearly is the biggest concern here, you know, does anybody aggregate health data, monitoring data from all of our wearables? Is, is, is that a danger? Is there something we should know and do about that? Yeah. Um, short answer, we are doing the right things, the industry is doing the right things. You know, when you talk about health and wellness, there is fitness. There is wellness, there is health, there is medi medicine. As I go from left to right, security becomes increasingly important. As I go from left to right, FDA and other regulatory bodies get involved. At the end of the day, the benefit we get using these technologies, wearing the latest devices, has to be greater than the cost we pay in security and so on. We are on the right side of that equation, but this is a journey that we will continue. It's not done. Thank you so much. I definitely learned a lot and now I have a whole new perspective that wearables is not just for health and wellness. It could be a luxury item. So we'll have to chat after the session. Thank you again for being here. We really enjoyed your presentation. Thank you everyone.
you have my contact information, feel free to reach out.